thesmartlocal.com I knew it! When things go too smoothly, right? Something like this is bound to happen. Hi everyone, I'm Xenia. Welcome back to another episode of Hired or Fired. In this episode, I'm going to be a food technologist for a day. I've actually never heard about this occupation before, but anything to do with food, I'm very confident, okay? Firstly, I read a lot of food labels. Secondly, I took food and nutrition during O levels. If I were to make a wild guess, I think they are the ones responsible for adding elements that does not exist naturally in food and using tech to make food safer, for example, fortified calcium and vitamins in your fruit juice, omega-3 eggs and pasteurized milk. Oh, I'm actually really nervous about this episode because whenever there's something to do with tech, I feel so dumb. Let's hope I brought my brain up today. Let's find out. Food technologies in a large company would be responsible for developing, formulating interesting, healthy food. And nowadays, people even talk about food needing it to be health-giving. You know, you eat food and make you healthy. So that's why the food technologies make all this happen. Hi, I'm Xenia. Hi, Xenia. I'm Florence, co-founder of Cosmod Health. So Cosmod Health is a spin-up from the Food Science Technology Department of NUS. So what will I be doing today? So the first is you're going to make a functional noodle. The second is the easy part, you're going to cook with the noodle. After giving an easy piece of part, the third mm. part will be more challenging. Okay. It involves 3D bioprinting of bio scaffolds. I feel like I only understand bio in the whole sentence. The rest, I don't know what you're talking about. No worry, you will find out more. Okay. okay? So I will introduce you to a very able food pack. Trainee Ray. Hi Ray! So, Ray just joined us under the SG United mm. Traineeship Program. So shall we get started? Yeah, here's our very own lab code for the day. Okay, let's go! So the main base ingredient for our functional noodles would be this protein fibre powder that is extracted from food waste. Food waste? So like leftovers? Uh, not exactly, so not correct. So food waste in this context means like homogeneous waste that we obtain from brewing of beer. Beer? Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so confused. Why people don't want to finish their beer? Also typically in most beer brewing processes, barley is actually the main ingredient. So after some processing, the starch and sugars will be extracted for the manufacture of beer. And what's left would be spent barley grains that are high in protein and fibre content. So Cosmo Health found a way that we can upvalue this waste material for human nutrition by extracting the protein and fibre from these spent barley grains and then we will condense it into a powder form and this powder can be used to formulate functional products like our noodles. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say, I'm so shocked. It's like one xiao xiao of the barley can split into beer and noodles. <laughs> Okay, Zinia, so now we're all ready with our gloves on and we will start making these noodles then. So first, we will weigh the dry premix first. Are you paying attention? Yes. Okay. She was like, you paying attention? Right? <laughs> I cannot give you a hint later. Because you know why? James, my director, is <laughs> the Okay, full attention. Also, a small tip, right, would be yes. to weigh the ingredients a bit separately. Oh. Yeah, such that like they don't really touch each other. And also like on the same line of reason, it will be easier for you to rectify any mistakes you make in weighing. Oh, so they take the mistake. Mm, yeah, okay. exactly that. Wow, this one is really very different from cooking at home and experimenting, you know. Home one is, you know, the law of aggravation. This one is like, wow, I have to be super accurate. Okay, Zinia, so you see me done it once and now it's your turn. Okay. My gloves are off, so you'll be doing it on your own, okay? Sure, no problem. James, you sure you have filmed this part? I'm gonna get everything right. I'm gonna get everything right. I'm gonna get everything right. <laughs> oh my god, Zinia, I don't even know how to close the container. <laughs> what the texture will be, uh? The texture is right. Oh, you see now, it's like the UFO, the whole thing stuck inside the blender. Eh? Okay, try. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The texture not really. Oh my. Did I forget something? I knew it! When things go too smoothly, right? Something like this is bound to happen. Yeah, I'm going to come with you. Now you're going to like shit. 
Okay, so 90 minutes is up and the moment of truth comes when we try to extrude these noodles. Okay. Are you ready? No, okay. Should be, I ask you, are you ready now? Yeah. This is not bad. <laughs> okay, so I'll go first. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, the sound though. Yeah, so this is how it goes. And then towards the end, just use a chopstick to scrape it open. And then very quickly, right, use your yeah. chopsticks to loosen up the noodles so okay. that they won't stick to each other. Oh, it really looks like noodles eh. Yeah. Are you excited for yours? Yes. <laughs> I hope mine come out. It's like that was so loud. I hope mine come out. I hope mine's like that was so loud. Wow, good job. It actually was quite good. So good job, Dinia, on making your very own noodles. And so for our next task, you will be tasked to cook a dish using these noodles. We will be judged on creativity and taste and also plating of the dish. Okay. Yeah. So I already have my own ingredients and I'll be making my own dish. So maybe you can give a thought to what you want to make for all of us. Then I'll go out and buy. Mm. Why not join just now when you go and buy? It? It's a competition, what? Oh! oh. <laughs> start already, what? Race start already. <laughs> okay, ah, let's go. Okay, from now on, draw this line. So, welcome to your second task, Zinia. Now, we'll have a mini cook off with the noodles that we just made in the first task. Yes. So, why? Oh. Do you want to introduce your dish a bit? No. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Three, two, one, go. Can we have a presentation? Okay. <laughs> So this is the end of our cooking challenge. Mm. Looks so bad. Looks so bad. Okay, now we invite our judge in to come and taste our dishes and she'll decide who did better. Yay! I've been waiting for this for so long. Actually, she's quite she smart. She used like bibimbap style. Okay. Mm. So, so what's your dish called? Okay, okay, I need to concentrate. Okay, good. Okay, now let's try that. I think the, the prong got, got chill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't think it would concentrate nicer. I think wise. Three wins. It's wise. <laughs> So it's the draw. No, I'm still going to ask you more creativity. It's not bad, you got that creativity. Don't come from Google, right? Don't come from Google, right? Don't come from Okay, Zinia, so for your last task, you'll be participating in some 3D bio scaffold printing activities. So as a food tech trainee here at Cosmo Health, I get to interact with others in different job roles and understand more of what the company does as a whole. Mm. So I'll introduce you to my colleague Heng Yi, who oversees the 3D bioscaffold printing activities here at Cosmo Health. Hi! Hey Zinia, <laughs> welcome to our newly established 3D bioprinting facility. Does this place look new to you? To be honest, I've never been to any other labs. La. So oh, this one really looks uh, new. I don't know, there are a lot of machines that I don't really know. For example, this one. It's actually a bio scaffold. Uh -huh. What is a scaffold? Oh, so a scaffold is actually for cells to grow and proliferate on. It's a, like a home, a support for the scaffolds to attach. Do you want to know more? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay, Zinia, this will be the first part of your task. You will need to set up a 3D bio ink syringe so that we put into the 3D bio printer later. So here we have the bio ink syringes all ready. So I actually pre-prepared this. Mm. So we have four. Do you know why we have four? No. Oh, in case you screw up. <laughs> <laughs> you know I did so well, you know? I won, I won. So after we are done printing the 3D scaffolds, yeah. we will need to actually pack them for our customers. So they grow cells at home? No, they, they, the, our customers are actually researchers. Oh. So cool. we pack it for our researchers and then we pass it over to them and they test the scaffolds out and use them for us. Okay, why, why do we need to 
grow cells. <laughs> oh, so you know, for researchers, they are oh. very interested in drug screening, how to like improve lifestyle, mm. and try to find out a cures for cancer. Uh, these scaffolds actually are able to help them in be their a, research. Yes, that's right. So what has it got to do with food? Food. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> 3 D bioscaffold is actually used. Uh, they use Zen. Mm. So Zen actually helps in uh, cyto affinity, helps the cell attach more than just with normal polymer because Zen uh, also has amino acids inside. Mm. So the amino acids actually help the cells bind more than just with normal synthetic polymers. Oh, so you don't use the cells to create more food, but instead you use food stuff to help with research. Yes, that's how the two verticals are actually linked. Oh my god! Dare say I'm finally on the same page as you. We may continue. Sorry. Okay. Wow, this episode is truly out of my comfort zone and my impression of a food technologist is completely wrong. For the first two tasks, I would say it's relatively easy to understand as a consumer. So as a food technologist, you don't just upgrade the nutritional value in food, you create new healthy food from scratch with sustainability in mind. And I really had a lot of fun making the functional noodles with Ray today and have a mini cook-off and I could relate to it so much because my dad has diabetes and I always feel really bad when we eat out because he has to control so much. So I really hope that the functional noodles we make today can get out there in supermarkets and restaurants so that people with dietary restrictions can also enjoy and indulge without any worries in mind. The last task though, I felt like I walked into the wrong lecture hall. It was very technical and difficult to keep up and even spending hours with Hingli in the lab I still don't understand how it works. <laughs> but, but the satisfaction that you get from being a part of such a noble act is very rewarding. You know, as a kid, everybody wants to save the world. As you grow older, you realize that it's not possible. But today, for the first time, meeting people like Hing Lee, who is extremely dedicated to this cause, it makes me feel like there are people saving the world and I feel comforted. So now if you ask me what a food technologist is, I would say they are the heroes we never knew because they solve all the problems relating to food. So hi Zinia, you have done your three tasks. You yes. should be very, very tired by now. No, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. Honestly, when I was told that you'll be the food I pay me for a day and then I was told that oh your background is art so I was thinking wow this is going to be a disaster <laughs> oh no because it is so deep tech right yeah. and especially a 3D value painting one you managed to surprise me really well done man I thought that you were able to learn very fast oh, okay, okay. Um, I also was very very impressed with your energy level because okay. you know in a startup where you do a lot a lot of experiments yeah. you know you need the energy level to drive you. I also felt that you have the courage to try, <laughs> okay. especially over that side. Yeah, you know, it's quite scary, right? Very yeah, technical. Very yeah. technical, and I thought you did very well for an art grad. So mm. I think you set the example. Wow, you know that thank you. It is, it is okay, <laughs> you know, you can always transcend your training as long as mm. you're willing to learn. So it boils down to the most important question for every single episode, and that is. You'll write your answer here. Don't tell me, ah. You will put hired or fired, and you have to be honest, okay? So I will write my okay, back to back. Yeah. Would you hire or fire me? Three, two, one. Hire if why if what? Remember what I said earlier. The basic requisite is you need to have. The Some knowledge. Background. Yeah. yeah. Your energy level, definitely. Soft skill, <laughs> attitude, everything else, fast. Tick, 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 tick. I see, okay. So I think that's also the reason why I put uh, fire higher <laughs> because I didn't know, okay. I felt like I would definitely be fired if this is uh, an occupation. But now they are like traineeships, they are attachments, you know, where you can learn and um, you can learn at a comfortable pace. I thought there might be you know, some chance. And I was right like 50-50. <laughs> Becoming a food technologist is actually one of the many roles under the SG United Traineeships and Mid-Career Pathways programs. If you are a graduate or you are looking to join a new industry, check out the portal in our description box below to find out how you can gain useful work experience through traineeships and attachments to enhance your career prospects.
Thank you for watching another episode of Hired or Fired. If you like this video, remember to like, share, subscribe and ring our notification bell and watch our other videos over there. And I'll see you next time. Bye!